What's up family? Thank you so much for pressing play on this video. I pray that the incorruptible, infallible word of God that you're about to hear is sown into your heart and it produces much fruit. So get ready for the word. But before that, why don't you go ahead and press subscribe so you can stay connected with us and share this with a friend so other people can be impacted by the word also. And if you feel led, go ahead and sow into this ministry so that we can continue to push forth quality content like you're about to see. Get ready for the word. So we have been for the last two weeks in our sermon series uh, called Who Me? And we have been saying basically, when you know who you are, you will know what to do. I'm going to say that again. When you know who you are, you will know what to do. And so today, y'all, from last week, the message impacted me. And I was looking at the text that we were reading last week, and, I, and one of the verses that we were talking through last week, it stood out to me. And I want to preach again on that verse, but I want to come from a different perspective. Is that okay? Is that all right? Y'all talk back to me. So we're going to run it back. Somebody say, run it back, run it back. So we're going to uh, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, the eighth verse in the New Living Translation. All right, here we go. You don't have to stand. I want you to read it, though. Here we go. It says, stay alert. Look at somebody say, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But here it is, y'all. But stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. For these fleeting moments or minutes, I want to talk from the sermon title today, Defeating Purpose Blockers. Defeating Purpose Blockers. Somebody say, Defeating Purpose Blockers. Lord Jesus, we ask that you have your way in this place. Continue to do it. Your presence is here. Your power is here. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for the word that you're giving us. God, I decrease and you increase, Lord. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. Let this word meet us right where we are and let it be sown on good soil in our hearts that it may bring forth a harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen, amen. Defeating purpose blockers. I wanted to go back uh, to the previous verse that we read because I believe many of us underestimate our adversary, the devil. Many of us don't take the fight that we're in every single day serious. We saw that verse and it said he is as a roaring lion. But some of us treat the enemy or treat the devil like he is a, a kitten. And what I'm here to tell you today is the opponent that we fight, the opponent that we go against, the one who is the adversary, the one who is the accuser of the brethren, he is real and the fight is for real. Can somebody clap your hands for my wife, Lady Tamara Ho? You did such an amazing job. Yes, Lord. And because we underestimate our opponent, we walk around with a plan that I'm going to do this, and we have a plan that I'm going to do that, and every day is going to be sunshine, and every day is going to be great, and I'm going to be successful, and when I grow up, I'm going to be a firefighter, and I'm going to do all these things. Some of us are, but when I grow up, I'm going to do these things, and we underestimate the enemy with our own plans. But the great Mike Tyson, somebody say the great Mike Tyson, <laughs> prophet Mike Tyson, he prophesied, and he told me that he told us this. He said that Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Oh, my gosh. Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face, until you get punched in the face with life circumstances, until you get punched in the face with fear and doubt until you get punched in the face with family issues and things that your kids are acting up and your spouse is acting this way and your parents are acting this way, your brother and sister, until you get punched in the face with financial failures, until you get punched in the face with spiritual attacks, everybody has a plan. 
Because when it comes to your purpose, the devil is trying everything in his power to stop you. I'm going to be real with you. When it comes to the purpose of why you're here on earth, when it comes to the assignment and the unique ability that God has placed inside of you, the devil's job is to stop you from fulfilling the reason that God made you. Mm. You know why? Because you are the answer to someone's problem. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, you're the answer. You are the answer to someone's issue. You are the answer to your, your family. You are the answer to your generation. You are the answer to your bloodline. You are the answer to someone else's decision to accept Jesus. You are the answer. The gift that God has placed in you is the answer to someone's problem. So the question, the question, the question, the question, the question is, what are you going to do when you get confronted with things sent to block your purpose? What are you going to do when you get punched in the face with life? What are you going to do when the enemy hits you with his best shot? Will you remain focused on your assignment and your purpose, or will you let life's punches knock you out? So I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Will you remain focused on what God has placed inside of you, or will you make the thing that happens to you stop you from moving forward in God? Will you allow the, the hit that the enemy has hit you with to, to say, I'm giving up on God? I'm giving up on church. I'm giving up on people. Or will you continue to move forward and be who God has called you to be? Because if you're going to live the life that God has created you to live and be everything you are called to be, you better believe that the devil is going to do everything in his power to stop you. And I'm calling these things that the enemy uses to stop you. We're calling those today purpose blockers. Somebody say purpose blockers. Are you, going to, are you going to defeat purpose blockers? Darius Daniel says it like this. He says purpose blockers are negative emotions, insecurities, and excuses that lead us down less productive, less fulfilling roads on our purpose journey. I want you to write that down. Purpose blockers. It's a lot of words, but you can do it. <laughs> Our negative emotions, your insecurities, yeah, that's right, or take pictures, yeah, new day, or insecurities and excuses that lead us down less productive, less fulfilling roads on our purpose to journey. These distractions are sent to stop you from achieving your purpose. These distractions that the enemy puts in front of us are sent to stop each and every one of you, myself included, from fulfilling the assignment on our lives, from fulfilling the call that God has made us to be. And if you don't fight to focus on defeating purpose blockers, they can hinder you from fulfilling the assignment that God has for your life. So here's the big idea. The biggest deterrence to your purpose is not lack of faith, but it's, it's already there, lack of focus. The biggest thing that is sent to stop you is not your lack of faith. It's your lack of focus. And you have to focus on defeating everything the enemy tries to use to block you from fulfilling the assignment of your life. But I'm here to tell you, that greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. I'm here to tell you that no matter what the enemy throws at you, if you have God on your side, that you will always be victorious. Oh, my gosh. I don't care what he throws at you. I'm here to preach. Let me preach to three or four people real quick. Because you thought, you thought just because you failed to this or to that, that God couldn't use you. But I'm here today to tell you that those two things, grace and mercy, they follow you and they overtake you. And I'm here to tell you that there is no weapon formed against you that will prosper, that you are more. Somebody say, I am more 
than a conqueror. And God is saying that if you don't allow the enemy to defeat you, to make you lose your focus, you will accomplish everything. There is so much inside of you. And here's the thing. I heard somebody say this many times. We don't know how great we are. We said this before. The enemy knows how great you are, but you act like you don't know. You walking around like, oh, da, 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 la, 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 la. And he said, if, when they, if they were to only lock in, if they were to only put their, their focus on what God wants them to do, they would be dangerous. But many of us are walking through life with no focus. Many of us are walking through life allowing whatever the enemy wants to do to knock us over and to knock us out. And I'm here to tell you, it's time to focus, y'all. It's time to focus on who God has created you to be. It's time to walk in your purpose and your destiny and your assignment that he has for you. There, you have a specific assignment, and we're going to talk about that today. You have a reason that you are on this earth, and I said this before. If you are breathing, mm -mm -mm, if you are living, if you are breathing in and breathing out right now, there is purpose on your life. Don't let the enemy try to fool you. If you are alive right now, if you are in this room or watching online, don't let the enemy fool you. God has a plan, and he said, I don't just have a plan. He said, my plan is good. He said, my plan is for you to succeed and have Good success. Got a plan for you. You just got to focus. Look at somebody say, you just got to focus. Just got to focus. I feel like, uh, I'm going to say this, I feel like Mickey from the Rocky movie. How, how many people remember Rocky? Okay, we got two generations in here. We got, we got the Rocky generation, and I'm Mickey. You got to fight, Rock. You got to fight. And then we got the, the Creed generation. How many Creed generation we got in here? Okay, there we go. She said, ooh, Michael B. Jordan. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're laughing too hard, Tamir. God bless. <laughs> Amen. We, got, we, have, we have two different types of, of people in this room. The, the Rocky generation, Mickey was the one. He was like, you got to fight. You can do it, Rock. And I'm here to tell you, you got to fight. You can do it. I don't care what the enemy throws at you. I don't care what he hits you with. You got to fight. And then the creed, Rocky Balboa was like the new Mickey. And he said this. I wrote it down. He said, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. I was like, whoo. That was a revelation right there. He said, it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard can you get hit and keep moving. When the enemy tries to knock you out. It's not about how hard you can hit. It's how much you can stand, stand up. And you said, if God is on my side, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. I'm going to defeat this enemy. I'm going to defeat this thing because God is in me. Somebody give God a praise if you believe that. <laughs> Hallelujah. When life hits you, the question is, when life hits you, can you still pray? Can, when life hits you, are, are you giving up on everything? Uh, when life hits your finances, it's going to get you. Can you still tithe? Somebody said, a little quiet in here today. <laughs> you know, the first thing, as soon as something happens to our, our, our tithe or our money, we say, well, you know, God, he understands. Let me pick a little bit of this. The question is, when life hits your finances, can you still have the faith to give God your first? Even though you don't know where everything else is going to happen, but your faith in giving God your first lets God know that you trust him. I trust you, Lord, even though I get hit. If you, when life hits you, will you still give God a few hours to come to church? Because you know how it happens, too. you depressed or you feel in some type of way. The first thing we do is we say, well, you know, I ain't going to church today. I, I ain't reading my word today. I think that's me. I'm not reading my word today. I'm not doing any of these things, but when life hits you, the question is, will you remain focused or will you fall and be defeated to what the enemy is hitting you with? If you have God on your side, the question is not, will you be defeated? The question is, will you be distracted? And if the devil can slow you down with hangups, emotional trauma, and failures, he can keep you from fulfilling your purpose, and your assignment. So here it is. We got three. How do I fight purpose blockers? The first thing, you have to embrace your unique design. Somebody say embrace my unique design. Each and every one of us are unique. 
each and every one of us, there are no two people who are alike. You could be a twin. Where's my twins in here? Any twins? One, two, three. Good gracious. We got a lot of twins. You could be a twin. And even as a twin, you are still not like your other twin. There are no two people who are alike. And here, here's where it is. The enemy wants you to conform. He wants all of us to sit back and just let things happen. He, want, he wants us to go on social media and say, man, that person looks like they're being successful doing that. Let me try to do that and get the success that they got. Well, here's the thing. They're getting the success that they have because God has created them specifically for what they're doing. And many of us, we cannot allow what we see other people do to get in our way and to, and to block our purpose. But we have to embrace our uniqueness. 1 Samuel 17, 38. Very familiar passage. And I'm going to give you three scriptures, y'all, today. So I want you to stay with me. Bible says, then Saul gave David, somebody say, his own armor. This is, this is the armor that Saul gave David that was Saul's armor. Bible says, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail, David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like. For he had never worn such things before. David says, I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off, verse 40. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag then armed only with this shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Here it is. David couldn't fight the way Saul fought because the battles that Saul fought were not on the level of where God was taking David. I'm going to say it again. David could not fight the way that Saul fought because the battles that God was giving David to fight we're not on Saul's level. Some of us are trying to use the methods of people who are not at the place where God wants to take you. Some of us are trying to use the method of people who are not created to fight the battle that God has in store for you. And so when God tells you what to do, you can't look at what everyone else is doing and try to do what they're doing. You got to do what God is telling you to do. You have to embrace your uniqueness because people will try to give you answers to what they did. And God is saying, I have a different level for you because old keys can't open new doors. Mm, my God. <laughs> old keys cannot open new doors. And God is saying, I, I have made you unique. You can look at your key right now. And your key can only open the door that it was created to open. But many of us are being attacked by the enemy to conform. He's trying to smooth your key out. Right. The problem with the smooth key is it could fit in any keyhole. The only issue is when you turn it, it won't unlock the door. I'm here to tell somebody in here that the reason that you've been cut. Oh, my gosh, I feel that thing. The reason why you've been cut. The reason why you have gone through certain situations in your life. God was just shaping you. So that when it came time for you to go in that hole, go, go into that door, that when you turn, when you, with the door that's supposed to open, it will open. And it's because of the things that you have gone through. It's not because of the things that other people have gone through. You're only being cut because he's making you a key. A key to somebody else's issue, a key to your family's next level, a key to your generational wealth and everything that's supposed to happen. It's because of what you're going through. You got to embrace the things that are happening to you. And you got to say the Bible says in all things, give thanks in everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So I got to give you thanks in the good, just like the, in the bad, because all it's doing is shaping me. Woo, who am I talking to? It's shaping you to be who God has called you to be. You got to embrace somebody say my unique design. Thank you, Jesus. How do I fight purpose blockers? Second thing you got to do, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Ah, Some of you are already ahead of me. You know where I'm going. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus and you got to keep focus. 
there is a purpose blocker called distraction. There is a purpose blocker called distraction that wants to keep your focus from being on the purpose maker. And you, in, the, in times of hardship, when the, the devil who is as a roaring lion is fighting and he's doing all he can do to you, it's not time for you to lose focus. It's time for you to focus on the one who gave you the purpose. You got to focus on Jesus. And if you fall to distraction, it's only because you haven't kept your eyes on the one who gives you purpose. Matthew 14, 28. Very familiar passage. Once again, Bible says, then Peter called to him. He said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Jesus said, yes, Peter, come on, come on. Bible says, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Verse 30, but when he saw, mm, when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. That means that he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to put his eyes on the storms and the test of life. He says when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Peter was walking in faith at first. And he was doing something that no one else could do until, somebody say until, until he took his eyes off of Jesus. Too many of us are doing things that our family never thought we could do until we take our eyes off the Lord and we put it on ourselves, and we become self-reliant. The enemy's job is to make you rely on yourself and not rely on God. Because as soon as you start relying on yourself, I'm more than certain that Peter was probably walking. And at first he was like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't believe. And then he, he may have started to think like, oh, my gosh, okay, I can walk on water. I can, man, I can do this. Then the Bible says he got fearful. The enemy will use fear to distract you from who you were always supposed to be. Man, you may be fearful of the future. You may even be fearful of success or failure, so you wouldn't even get out of the boat. Peter at least got out the boat. (laughs) He at least tried when all the other disciples were just looking like, man, Peter, like, yo. Problem is, I guarantee you, some of them, when Peter began to sink, they was like, I told you. (laughs) And too many of us have people in our boat who are looking at us go out to do what God is calling us to do, and as soon as we start to fall, they're like, I told you he shouldn't have did that. But what would have happened if the people who were in the boat began to pray and begin to say, Peter, you got it. Peter, you can do it. You can do this. You got to you got to look at your circle. I know we say that a lot. You got to examine who's in your boat and you have to keep your eyes on the one who you're walking towards. You have to keep your eyes on Jesus. If you are going to defeat blockers from your purpose. You have to keep, we have to, I'm in it too. We have to keep our eyes on our Savior and do what he's called us to do. I was driving one time, y'all, and my wife, she she probably remembers this. I don't know if you remember this. But I was driving one time, and I I looked down at my phone. And, um, you know, very quickly, it 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 wasn't like long. I looked down at my phone when I was driving, and I looked up, and a car had stopped immediately, and I ran into the back of them. And, I, you know, it could have been another way because, I mean, I, I pressed my brakes, but I didn't press them in time because when I looked down and when I looked back up, I didn't press them in time. That's why you need to make sure you have the little thing that you can put your phone up there. Don't, don't, be, like, don't be like your pastor <laughs> but, but, because it could have been another way. I was distracted by something that caused me to cause harm to someone else. Now, no one was hurt but their car was hurt, and our insurance has had to take care of it. But if I, would you say? Insurance. She said, my insurance was hurt. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> insurance was hurt. But if I would not have been distracted, if I would have kept my sight forward, that wouldn't have happened. I'm here to tell a few people today, keep your eyes ahead. Don't look to the left and right. 
Even though the enemy is trying to distract you by bringing the storms of life and this and that, it's time out, y'all, for it starting over, over and again, over again. It's time to look forward and keep your eyes on Jesus. If I'm going to defeat purpose blockers, I have to keep my eyes on Jesus. Last thing, last one. If I'm going to fight and defeat purpose blockers, it's the last one. I have to accept my assignment and I have to fight to fulfill it. Accept your assignment. Look at somebody say, it's your assignment. <laughs> Accept your assignment. See, too many of us, we, 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 we have not accepted our assignment. And we're wondering why we're still sitting in the same place year after year, time after time. We're seeing everybody else go forward, but we still haven't accepted the thing that God has called us to do. And that happens because of fear. That happens because we don't want to experience the pain that may come with us moving forward and doing what we're supposed to do. But I remember my wife, and I, always, I use my wife often, <laughs> but when she was pregnant or about to give birth to our son, it was the very first time that she had given birth. And, and, and I don't know if anybody's heard the story. I feel like my dad because I'm starting to tell the same stories over and over. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I see why pastors do it now. You start thinking about your life. But somebody hasn't heard this story before. <laughs> so so she's, she's about to give birth. She's in the delivery room. And you know what? I'm, supposed, I'm thinking I'm real holy and saved. I put on like Tasha Cobbs, like worship music, break every chain. And she's looking at me like, boy, if you, don't, if you don't turn that off. And you know the little beep thing, the little thing that's supposed to tell you when the contractions are happening, that thing is going off. Beep. And every time it happens, I see her face. She's scrunching up and she's looking crazy. And I'm like, come on, let's worship. And she's like, leave me alone. <laughs> and so we get to the place. She goes through hours of labor, hours and we finally have Ethan. And so at the end of it, she's no longer in pain, but it looks like now she is rejoicing. She's happy. She's holding her baby. And I asked her, like, you know, are you good? Would you do it again? She says, yes, I would do it again because I know what's on the other side of it. Here's the thing. Too many of us are too afraid to go through it because we're scared and we don't know what's on the other side of it. But you have to understand that what's on the other side of your pain, what's on the other side of your discomfort, what's on the other side of this is nothing but joy that if you can go through it, if you can accept your assignment and if you can fight to fulfill it, everything that you've gone through is for a reason. Everything that you go through is not for naught, but it's to make you who God has called you to be. And the person that I want to bring to the stage for this example is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Jesus had to accept his assignment to go to the cross and to endure pain and to endure suffering and to endure nails in his hands and to endure people mocking him and to endure all these things. But the Bible says in verse 42, he said, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Now, too many people look at this and we're like, man, Jesus, God is asking not to go through pain? Well, here's the thing. Jesus was 100% God, and this is what made him unique. He was 100% man also. So he had both sides, and they were fighting. They were fighting. But Jesus, he, he did something that we have to take note from. When we are fighting to accept the assignment for our life, he prayed. He went to his father in prayer, and he said, this is the next thing. He said, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Or the King James Version that we all know, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He was telling God that even though I'm going to feel pain, even though I'm going to feel discomfort, even though, like we talked about last week, I'm going to feel suffering, he said, it's not my will. He said, but it's your will, because I know on the other side of this, there will be glory. I know on the other side of this, you are simply making me and molding me to be who you've called me to be. He had to endure the cross for our sins. The Bible then says, then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed, he prayed, 
he, what did he do? He prayed. Too often, we stop praying when we're going through. Too often, we stop going to the place where we're supposed to get strength from when we're going through. But you got to take a a page out of Jesus' book. He says, when you are experiencing things that are too much for you, he said, it's not time to go and just talk to somebody else. He said, it's time to what? Pray. He says, he prayed even more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. What I'm here to tell you is that this life is not going to be perfect. I'm here to tell you that everything that you experience is not going to be sunshine, that there will be rain sometimes, but if you're going to fulfill your purpose, you have to accept what God allows, and you have to do what he's calling you to do. And when you feel you can't make it, thank you, Jesus. I don't know who this is for. When you feel like you cannot make it, and you feel like it's too much. He doesn't say go and talk to your best friend. That's okay. He says go to the Father in prayer. And you have to understand that prayer is where you find your strength. You may go in weak. Thank you, Jesus. But when you begin to pray and you begin to ask God, God, give me the strength to make it. He, he sent an angel to encourage Jesus. <laughs> you get it? He sent an angel to encourage Jesus, how much more will he do for you? How much more will he do for you when you are fighting your faith fight, when you are fighting to be who God has called you to be? It's time to pray, y'all. It's time to give God time in your prayer closet. It's time out for getting on social media first. Read your Bible, open up your mouth, get on your knees and pray. That's why we don't see people with power anymore, because we're not going where the power is. We're going to social media. We're venting on social media. And that's all good. That's cool. I don't do it. But if that's what you want to do, it's all good. What I'm telling you to do is go to your secret closet. Go and pray. If you want to defeat things that are fighting your purpose. What's my three points? Can we go back to that, Ron? Number one, go to the first one. You got to embrace your unique design. Number two, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus in all standing. And then number three, you got to accept your assignment and what? Fight to fulfill it. It's time out for weak Christians. Where this world is going, it is time out for weak Christians. I don't know if you see it. But there is coming a time where people are going to, going to be running to the answer. Are you going to answer it with what Jesus did for me? He could do it for you. This world is not getting better, y'all. It's getting worse. But as believers, we understand why. This is so that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And there's a hedge of protection that is over the people of God in this season. There's a hedge of protection that, are, that is over the ones who will go in prayer and not just go to CNN, not go to all these things and to be fearful. But you are protected because the one who lives inside of you. I'm going to say it again. Greater. Somebody say greater. greater. Is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can we give God a praise just for a couple of seconds? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you, Father, for the things that you're doing for us. Thank you, Lord, that you're giving us the strength and the power and the wisdom to defeat things that are coming against the assignment that you have for us. We believe and we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So, Father, the first prerequisite for that, you said for those who love you. God, and you said, if we love you, we will keep your commandments. So, Father, right now, God, we pray, God, that you help us to keep your commandments even for our lives. God, we thank you that even in the midst of trials and tribulations and when things happen to us that we cannot understand and explain, we still say thank you for we know that you are working things out. God, you are orchestrating our lives. God, you have every step in order, our steps are ordered by the Lord. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, can we clap our hands?